Hello, this is Kelly Borsheim, and I want to tell you another thing that's happened with my, my man Stuart here. My portrait bust is going to be a sculpture in bronze. Right now I'm making it in plastilina. So, before you heard me talk about the change, the client said that he sees the pictures now I was working on when I did the hair studies. And now he says, no, I know, I want you to thin him down and make him look better, you know, younger. Use the other pictures from the wedding. So we did that. And then he said later, no, no, here's a new picture here of this. It doesn't quite look like him. So now I've, I've knocked the nose down back. I'm still working on the eyes because they don't quite have the slant right. But uh, also I had way more information about the ears. So and you see a blob of clay here because it was my note that one night I saw He's got a little bit of a dent here. You still, even if you're going to have fat mean that you remove the bone and stuff so you don't see it so much because he wants to go back now to the, to the larger version of his uncle. And, but I, this was something I put because it's an obvious thing that says to me the next morning, hey, don't forget to have a look at this part and make it, you know, you're going to have just different muscle groups here to do these things and so you need a little bit of undulation but not exaggerated not like so many ribs that people put in that you think good grief they look like starving people um, you need to be subtle with this stuff even when you show it but let's get back to this what he decided before was that he wanted to cut off the body not have it so long and I was worried about that because I want I wanted a proportion that was not square so I wanted more long than, sh than, than wide, and also I wanted this to be um, narrow so that it puts the focus up on the face and acts sort of like an arrow to go up. However, he decided he didn't like that, so um, I sent him some pictures, I'll put that in the video in a minute, um, about, okay, let's decide where you're going to go. Because the other thing he wants now is not to have this this way. I asked him about the back and showed him pictures of Greek busts that I was referencing based on his desire to have a classical Greek look, which is why you don't see me putting pupils in these eyes. Um, that's what he wanted. So all of this I had to find out before I made the mold how did he want me to finish it and I'm talking to the bronze foundry because every foundry works differently and I want to use their way of doing the mold before I make a mold that they go, why did she do this, you know? So we talk first. But what he wants now is this entire body to be filled in, including the arms going down, because of course you're not going to have a woohoo. So the arms are going to go straight down. And I said, really, you want the whole body as if it's going in, like he's standing in water and this everything from the above up outside of the water? Yes, that's exactly what I want. The bathtub technique is what I the bathtub look, not the technique. The bathtub technique is when you're carving stone, for example, and you carve all the details here, finished, and then you keep going down. That's not how I work at all. I work the whole thing all over the place, but I don't understand this method. But some people do, so every brain is different. But anyway, the problem is, you can see that my board is not so wide, and um, that makes it a, it's a very different problem, because had I started knowing that I was going to make this wide, I would have chosen a board that was larger because not only does it have to hold my sculpture and it has to hold the two-part mold that I'm going to make on top of it. I have a flexible mold that's going to fold out from these undercuts and stuff like that and then I'm going to have a fiberglass mother mold that I put outside of this. <laughs> so if these shoulders were to come down here you can see that's longer than the board that I have and the reason I didn't choose a larger board was because I had to have one that was heavy enough to support the weight of, of the armature, of the clay, and of the mold. And um, now the sculpture is going to be larger because the other thing is I'm working in my kitchen and I don't have a professional studio space the way most artists dream of. I work with what I have. And um, I, if I had chosen a larger board it would have been more difficult to do. Plus at the beginning of this project I envisioned paying a foundry to do the mold and that means I needed to carry this out of my house and I had a, I almost had a problem with that in a sculpture I did in 2016 of the frog towers with the rock towers and things I the board just barely fit out my front door so I did all the work here in the kitchen because I can't navigate through the corridors of this old medieval building not medieval but I'm exaggerating that but old, it's an old stone house in the, in the rural parts um, so Anyway, this is what I'm doing now is I, first, I don't know if I have enough clay to cover the real estate like this. So, um, first I need to cut off 
all of the clay that's involved in this back, even up to here, because all of this clay I'm going to put on the outside. And I've got my, I bought some more of this spray foam. I showed you before in earlier videos how I use this insulation foam for your windows and stuff. I use this and spray it all over here and it expands a little bit and then it, it gets pretty hard. But I can still carve it. This is soft here, but where it is actually cured by air, can you hear that? <laughs> so it's like knocking on my head, eh? <laughs> anyway, so I'm basically going to destroy that. I'll show you the pictures. The, the thing is that um, not knowing where I was going to end this off, I wanted to make it the proportion that I wanted for what I thought would look good because I can't make it longer later, you know. So my decision is going to be once I put the foam on the back and start shaping the body, how do I want to make a mold? Because am I going to somehow get a piece of board that's going to be absolutely level, maybe put books or blocks or something under here to do that so that when I make the mold I only make it here? Or do I just use this level? I'm going to have to put another board underneath this as the obvious solution first. But the, the sculpture may end up coming down here and so I'm going to have to block that off or, you know, the, the thing is, the less work you the more accurate you make the mold to the finished bronze piece that you want, the more efficient the work is going to be and also less costly the work is going to be because it's better to build the foundation of the house without um, <laughs> going back later and going, I'm going to add a basement to this after you've already done a lot of the construction of the house. So that's the kind of thing that I'm, I'm thinking about now is what am I going to do with this stopped height. So I'll show you pictures of the stopped height and you can see uh, where, where he thinks he wants this. But I'm also, to be honest, because we've gone back and forth on what size he wants this with this and now with this new change with the bigger sculpture, a part of me thinks I'm going to make a mold of the entire thing and just have him at the foundry looking at the wax that's poured and have him say, okay, I want this or take it off here. Because in the wax it'll be easy to make a fairly cut straight, put it on a hot pad or something to level it out, and then you know put in a little plate for mounting it, and uh, that's fine. But once it's in the metal, these kind of changes are just ridiculous and stupid and costly and, and time consuming, so it wouldn't make any sense. But because right now um, what's happening is the client has sort of become an artist. <laughs> you know, uh, People say, how could he change his mind? Well, uh, when I'm making my own work and it develops and I see something, and, uh, I sometimes change my mind too. Things kind of develop in their own way. So the other thing is that nobody can read inside another person's mind. I mean, maybe some people can, but I don't know anybody who really can. And it's like everything in life. We know what we don't like by seeing it. And we don't always know what we do like until we see it. But in the beginning of a commission, and I mean, even though we're, I'm working from these photos and he told me I want the great classic thing, I want the solid eyes, and I want this, and I want his country shirt and all this, I have these specs, but until he actually is seeing this in a three-dimensional video like what I'm showing you now, um, he may not have known what he wanted. And then as time went on, he thought, oh, look at the possibilities here. And then maybe something else happened. Maybe he talked to family members, and maybe he... <coughs> when traveling, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still recuperating from influenza. And uh, so you see more information and you think, oh, what if it's too late? Let me try to add this into this. So um, the thing that scared me was when he said, well, let's just put it on there. And then if I don't like it, we can go back. And I thought, Ay. <laughs> but anyway, he is now part of the art process. But I have to say that... Um, I'm not one of those people that appreciates when people change a price on me with the contract changes and stuff like that, even for simple things. But in this case, um, I have a really wonderful client because he realizes that he's having me go forward and go back and go forward and back and then do these other things. And he says, I'm happy to pay with what I want. And I realize that it's me changing these specs. And so that's an ideal situation because I don't want to be going, well, here's a little more, here's a little more. So I, I basically, I told him at this point, I need to figure out 
what it has actually cost me to make this back because instead of being hollow all the way back here it's now going to be rounded and before when I got the foundry co um, quote before I even started the job because I had to have a starting point to be able to come up with a price to ask my customer right so because you can't start a job without a price and so you have to do all this stuff but once I had this done I sent it off to my foundry and I said, can I have an accurate, more accurate quote now that I've actually got something? Here are the measurements, he wants to cut it to here, blah, blah, blah. And so the foundry gave me a quote. <laughs> it was over 50% more of the original quote. Uh, I don't have control over that, but it was something that kind of made me go, oh, 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 oh. So I told my client that I want to wait until I get the new dimensions I'll have to get a new quote from the foundry, and then at that point I'm going to have to say, okay, the price had to go up this much. It's for bigger materials, more work on my end, but also more um, expenses on the stamp. The, the stampa is the, the mold. Actually, there's three molds in a sculpture process usually. And um, all of this extra stuff here, but I don't want to sit there and go, how about a thousand here, a thousand there, a thousand there. I really want to get a total that I don't have to keep giving him this extra price, extra price. So we'll see. And um, the thing is that's complicated, and I hope that he's not going to be upset about, is I anticipate this is going to be a pretty good price heft uh, change because this is a lot bigger than the change that he had before. But the problem is that I'm not going to know exactly how much until I do the work until I get the measurements, until I take the photos, and I get the foundry quote. So you can kind of see it's a rock and a hard place that it might be nicer in some ways to try to say, you know, commissions are more work because you're involving somebody outside of yourself. I can talk to this guy here and I can say, oh, I like you like this, or maybe I like you like that, or I can, and I can decide to change him, and that's my cost, my problem, my creation, Every, you know, birth takes time. but. When somebody else is telling me, do this, do this, and do this, try this, and go back, and go forward, and go, you know, it, it's different. But it's such an interesting deal, because if you want to get the commission work, then you have to spend this time in dialogue. If you put the price way too high, they're going to say, uh-uh. If you put the price too low, you're going to lose money. That's just a given um, because you're involving another living being in your creation and that's always two minds trying to talk about stuff. It's, it's, it takes more time and, and stuff like that. So anyway, um, how do you think he's looking? <laughs> so follow my channel here if you'd like to subscribe to my Patreon page. I would appreciate that. They get a little more updates about the backgrounds of my life and um, what I'm creating and stuff like that and uh, you can watch the progress of him. I do like him with his nose smaller, but until I had this profile view here, I really had no idea. This, this picture is so defining of the nose, more than even this one is, uh, because it's at such an angle that it's hard to tell. But um, anyway, that's it for now. Leave your comments and questions and share with your friends. You can see finished bronze portrait and stone and paintings and drawings and all that stuff on my site at borshamarts.com. Thanks for watching, and follow me here on YouTube. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Alright, so I mentioned earlier in the other video that I need to remove some of the clay here, because now the shoulders are going to be this broad. He wants the full body with the everything as though he's coming out of water. And I don't have enough clay to finish this, so I want to cut the clay off here. To, I want to fill up this whole thing with this spray foam. And that means I want to draw right about here because I want to save this clay. And all of this clay that's up underneath here, I need to pull out and save it so that it doesn't get covered up by the foam and I can use it again. And that means I'm going to follow along this line here because at some point this will all be hollow so I can really make this quite thin. Very thin layer of clay here, you see. So everything that I'm outlining, out, that's a strange pronunciation. <laughs> I can't hear myself with this influenza. Oh, with this flu. Anyhow, so this is what I'm going to do in uh, 
a little bit of days. Right now I don't have a lot of energy because I have this flu stuff, but uh, a little bit of here, a little bit of there. And so I come over here and do the same thing. I want to just draw. I don't need to be precise, but why should I waste the work that I've already done? But also, I don't want to hide this material under something else. It'll just be a waste of space and time. And obviously, the I have clays that are other colors than this and other types of plastilina, but I prefer to stick with one material as much as I possibly can. So I'm going to pull out all of this clay. You can see the foam here. It's not a whole lot that I have to get rid of, but... Um, I think by the time I take out of this stuff, I think there'll be a substantial amount that I've saved. And then I'll spray foam everything under here and we'll start again. And that's another video. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Follow, like, and subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Patreon, and uh, my site is borsheimarts.com. Ciao, ciao, ciao.